Hi friends, welcome to Organic True Crime with Sydney Hopes, where I talk about interesting true crime stories. This month, happy February, <laughs> I'm focusing on killer couples, and today I'm going to be talking about the infamous couple Bonnie and Clyde, who went on a two-year crime spree, taking lots of lives along the way, and that even now, almost 90 years later, we still know them by their first names. You can say Bonnie and Clyde and everybody knows who you mean, right? So Clyde Chestnut Barrow was born in 1909 to Henry and Cumey. He was the fifth of seven children and the Barrow family was extremely poor. They, when Clyde was born, they owned a small farm, but eventually they did lose the farm when they hit hard times. And the entire family of nine actually ended up having to live underneath a wagon until they could afford a tent. And that was really all I could find about his like, childhood. I do know that he had some older siblings that moved away and um, went to live in Dallas, Texas because the family lived outside of Dallas, Texas. Um, until the year 1926 when Clyde was arrested for the first time, he had rented a car and then just didn't return it. And when he was approached about it, asking where his rental car was, he just ran away, which is obviously pretty sketchy. And he was later arrested. And then later that year, he was arrested for a second time with his older brother, Buck. They were stealing turkeys. It was around the holidays and they were gonna sell these turkeys, um, but they got caught and arrested while they were stealing them. And after those two arrests, he did occasionally have like a normal job, but he also at the same time was still stealing from stores and cracking safes and stealing cars, like serious burglaries <laughs> Clyde was committing. Now we're going to switch gears for a minute and talk about Bonnie. Bonnie Elizabeth Parker was born in 1910 to Charles and Emma. She was the middle child. She had an older brother and a younger sister. And in 1914, her father Charles ended up passing away and she and her family had to move in with her grandparents who were very poor at the time and lived in a suburb area that was called Cement City. But despite her difficult childhood. Bonnie grew up as a very good student. She did really well in school and she always had dreams of becoming an actress. During Bonnie's second year of high school, she met a boy named Roy Thornton and the two started dating. And in 1926, when she was 15 years old, while well, Clyde was getting rested for the first couple times, she and Roy Thor Thornton got married. And unfortunately, Roy turned out to be a very abusive husband. And in 1929, he was arrested for, I think, a burglary. And at that same time, Bonnie had been working at a cafe and it closed. So she decided to move back in with her grandmother and she never saw Roy again. But she also never actually divorced him. And she had a tattoo of their names above her right knee. And that brings us to 1930, when Bonnie and Clyde met. Now, there are several different versions of the story of like the day that they actually met, but basically they met through a mutual friend and they immediately fell for each other. Unfortunately, very shortly after they met, Clyde got arrested for auto theft. But at that point, Bonnie was already fully committed to him, so much so that she helped him escape. She smuggled in a gun to Clyde who was in jail awaiting trial and he used that gun he and several other inmates used that gun to escape from prison. But they were all recaptured about a week later. And this time while Clyde was in jail, he was sexually assaulted multiple times by another inmate until Clyde crushed the man's skull with a lead pipe. And this is technically considered Clyde's first murder, but he was never convicted of it because another inmate that was already serving a life sentence at the time took responsibility for the murder. And after this, Clyde went to trial and got his sentencing, and he was sentenced to work hard labor, to go to a hard labor camp, and he really didn't want to do that. So he and another inmate staged an accident where he got his big toe and half of the second toe chopped off, and I don't know which foot it was on, but I do know he had a limp for the rest of his life because of this. And what he didn't know was at that same time, his mother was actually trying to get him released on parole and he had been granted it. So in 1932, just a few days after his accident, he was released. So he didn't actually have to do that. But 
And at this time, when Clyde was released, people that knew him said that he came out a completely different person, that he had changed. And this is when the Barrow Gang was formed and where his crime spree began. Now, there were a few people that kind of like were in the gang and then weren't and I think got arrested and weren't. But the main ones were it was led by Bonnie and Clyde. And then there was a 16 year old boy named W.D. Jones, who was like Clyde's sidekick. And they were the main members of the Barrow Gang. And they started out with just doing like small burglaries and stealing cars, which Clyde had experience in. But they did eventually escalate to robbing banks. What they generally would do to avoid getting caught is they would travel from state to state and stick right near the border so that they could just hop to another state and police couldn't follow them because that was out of their jurisdiction. They didn't really, I don't know, continue or communicate at the time, I guess. Anyway, um, and they committed a lot of robberies <laughs> during this time, just banks and stealing from people and stealing cars and all kinds of stores. Anyway. Shortly, shortly, shortly after joining the Barrow Gang, Bonnie was arrested during a robbery. And while she was in jail awaiting her trial, Clyde committed his second murder. He killed a man named J.W. Butcher while he was robbing the man's store. And at this point, Clyde became a wanted man. Once Bonnie went to her trial, she basically just said that she had been kidnapped by the Barrow Gang and that she didn't have anything to do with the robbery. And they didn't actually have any evidence saying that that was not true, so they released her. And she and Clyde went on the run. And a lot of times in order to escape from the actual robbery, the Barrow Gang would kidnap people who were a lot of times police officers, and they would drive them to a different state really far away and drop them off with some money to get home. Anyway, one night while on the run, the Barrow Gang decided to go to a dance in Oklahoma. And while they were leaving, they were approached by two police officers and ended up getting in a shootout with them, basically. Um, they shot and killed one of the police officers and then seriously injured the other, and they all ended up getting away. And then shortly after this, the Barrow Gang was responsible for another murder of a man named Doyle Johnson. They were stealing his car when they shot him. And after that, they were responsible for the death of another police officer after they had accidentally fallen into a police trap that was set for them. They shot another police officer and got away yet again. And now at this point, uh, Clyde's brother Buck was released from jail and he and his wife joined the Barrow Gang. And I'm actually gonna do a separate video on the two of them next week because they're really interesting. Anyway, they joined in and the whole gang decided to try and hide out in Missouri and lay low. But the thing is, they didn't lay low at all. They partied and they shot a gun in the, in the garage. There was an apartment over a garage that they were staying in. And they were very sketchy. Although one neighbor said he specifically noted the way that Clyde parked his car because he backed it into the driveway, which apparently was gangster style um, because it was for it quicker getaway, which is true. That's why he did that. But I just think that's funny. All people back into their driveway all the time now, but I guess that was sketchy at the time. So, so eventually the neighbors called police and when they came to investigate there, it ended up in a shootout between the Barrow gang and police. So right when it started, um, Buck and Blanche had a dog named Snowball and Snowball went running down the street. So Blanche went running after it. And then Buck ended up getting just grazed by a bullet that I guess bounced off of a wall and just kind of hit him after the bounce. Um, W.D. Jones was hit, but not very badly, and he recovered. And Clyde was hit, but his suit coat button deflected it. It, it bounced off of his suit coat button, which is that not insane? Anyway. Two police officers were killed in the incident before the Barrow Gang escaped, which they did, and they grabbed Blanche and pulled her in the car down the street. They didn't mention Snowball, though. I don't know what happened to Snowball. So the Bear Gang had kind of been expecting that they were going to have to leave soon, but they weren't fully expecting the police ambush. So they did have most of their stuff packed and ready to go, but some of it they did still leave behind. 
and some of the stuff that they left included Buck and Blanche's um, wedding certificate or marriage license, marriage license. So they now had their names as well. And they left a reel of undeveloped photos, which the police did get developed. And um, this is where we have most of the photos that of Bonnie and Clyde that exist. The more famous ones at least came from these, this reel. One of which being Bonnie pointing a gun at Clyde while reaching towards his belt to grab the one that he had. And the other being Bonnie by herself with a cigar in her mouth holding a gun. So police had these published in newspapers so that the faces of these people could, could be out there. And at first, people were super interested. I mean, they still are. It's an outlaw gang led by two young lovers. And not only that, but Bonnie, who breaks the law, blatantly lives with a man who is not her husband and takes pictures with cigars in her mouth holding a gun wearing pants. That's interesting. That's something to read about. But, and they were kind of almost popular for a while, which is ridiculous because they're murderers. And eventually people did stop being, I don't want to say that they liked them, but they did. They liked reading about them. But that kind of went away when they started realizing that not a single member in the Barrow gang hesitated for a second to kill someone if it meant that it would help them get away. They did capture people and let them go during robberies, but they also, if they caused a problem, would kill them. So so another thing that came out of this that police were hoping for was everyone learned their faces. They knew the faces of the Barrow gang, which at that point was W.D. Jones, Bonnie and Clyde, and Buck and Blanche. And they were also all looking for a group of five fitting this description. So it made it really hard for the Barrow gang to travel and to find places to stay when everyone knew what they looked like and how many of them there were, you know? And it also made it really difficult to commit robberies because everyone knew what they were looking for now. Poor them. Quick little fun fact about 1930s America. Um, so at this time, police officers had to provide their own cars and guns on their policeman's salary, whereas Bonnie and Clyde were just stealing all of their cars and guns. So it ended up where the Barrow Gang had better working and nicer weapons and vehicles, and that helped them to get away, even though now their faces were known. And they also, at this point, really started developing a pattern of kidnapping people during their robberies and then letting them go somewhere else to help them get away. So at some point, while they were on the run, one night, Clyde, or day, Clyde was driving a car with W.D. Jones and Bonnie, and he somehow missed some warning signs about a bridge being out and ended up driving their vehicle over an embankment. And because of this accident, Bonnie's leg was badly, very, very badly burned. And it's kind of not quite sure how. Um, some sources say that it was from battery acid leaking from the accident, and some say that it was from a fire that started from the accident. But either way, it was a really bad burn. And she ended up receiving treatment um, from a farm that was nearby. She had the boys help her kind of carry her to this farm. And eventually police did show up at the farm looking for Bonnie and Clyde and W.D. Jones. The two officers that were sent out to the farm to investigate were kidnapped by Bonnie, Clyde, and W.D. Jones. I don't know how else to say his name, sorry. Anyway, they were kidnapped and eventually released in another state. They were handcuffed and barbed wire, barb, barbed wired, barbed wired to a tree. And they were also left with a note from Bonnie saying that she is not a, a cigar smoker because she didn't want to be known for that. She didn't like that that became part of her image. She had just taken W.D. Jones's cigar for a second to take that picture, just for the picture. and then it became like a thing that Bonnie smoked cigars and she wanted the world to know but she did not. She did smoke cigarettes though. And this brings us to the end of 1933 when the gang was discovered and another shootout happened. At this, sorry, this time Clyde's brother Buck was hit in the head and was seriously injured and they did all escape from that shootout and they went and started camping out near an abandoned theme park 
um, but they were discovered again there. And at this point, Buck and Blanche stayed behind while everyone else escaped and got away and the two of them were arrested. Buck died shortly after from the head wound and Blanche ended up being arrested and sentenced to 10 years in jail. Shortly after that, W.D. Jones was also arrested, leaving just Bonnie and Clyde on the run. What happened was the three decided to, for some reason, take a risk and visit their families. I guess it had been a while. Anyway, um, W.D. was from the same area that Bonnie and Clyde were, but his mom had moved, so he had to separate from the two of them to go see her, and that was when he was arrested. And at that point, he told police everything that they asked of him. And because of his confession, they were able to put out warrants for both Bonnie and Clyde. So at this point, Bonnie also became a wanted woman, wanted person, um, and had a price on her head for the first time. In 1934, Clyde helped a friend of his, along with several other people, escape from jail. And during the process, one of the guards was killed, and this murder was the last straw for police. They sent out a serious manhunt and they called in a retired um, Texas Ranger to help them find them. And a few days later, the Barrow Gang was responsible for the death of another police officer. And it was disputed whether um, Bonnie was the one that pulled the trigger or not. It's thought that she was, but that wasn't ever actually proven. So at this point, Bonnie and Clyde were hiding out on the family farm of one of their former gang members. It was actually the man that was responsible for taking the pictures that were found. But eventually his father agreed to help police capture Bonnie and Clyde. So what they did was uh, he um, pretended to have his car break down and was like sitting on the side of the road next to his car and police were everywhere, hiding everywhere. And Bonnie and Clyde came driving down. This was like a back road that led to the farm. And the two of them came driving down the road and they slowed down to see him and potentially help. And as soon as their car started to slow down, police jumped out and began shooting. This happened on May 23rd, 1934. There were a total of 167 bullets that were shot towards Bonnie and Clyde. Um, 17 of them hit Clyde and 26 hit Bonnie. Bonnie was found to be holding a gun, a sandwich, and a pack of cigarettes, while Clyde was found to be holding just a gun. And before, this is just ridiculous, before police were able to close off the scene, people surrounded and took souvenirs. People took pieces of the car, people took shell casings, people took anything they could from a crime scene, from these two dead bodies, including someone cut off a piece of Clyde's ear and took his ear I mean, that's, I, I don't even know. I, that's ridiculous. Why would you, why, why would you do that? I mean, I, they were, at that time, they were very, I don't want to say popular, but they were, people read about them, people every, everywhere knew their names. This was the first, I don't know, this didn't happen. A very young boy and girl leading a gang, committing murders all over the country and getting away with it for years. I understand that it was interesting, but I know, it's just ridiculous taking souvenirs from a crime scene from a from anyway and then their car was used as a traveling show it traveled around the country and people could see bonnie and clyde's car full of bullet holes and now it lives in a casino in vegas where people can still see bonnie and clyde's car full of bullet holes i don't know it's just like i have i have problems with this because i know i'm sitting here talking about their story so what can I really say? But it's really glorifying to murderers. Just saying. Anyway, that's Bonnie and Clyde. Thank you for joining me. And I'll see you again next week for another one that you probably don't know as well.